Now, for our advanced air braking method, remember in the beginning I showed you that I had a closer orbit. So let's take a look. We had that 500,000 meter orbit, which is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to get much closer at this time. Much closer at this time. Okay. And we're going to stop it somewhere there. Let's click how far are we one hour away. That's fine. And again, we're going to do adjustments. Remember, the further away you are, a little bit of fuel, a drop of fuel, will make a much bigger difference in terms of where you're trying to head to. So the closer I am, I'm going to need a little more fuel to make the adjustment I need. Of course, when I'm right there, I need a shitload of fuel. So it's always better to make the adjustment from far away. You know. Um, now I am 505,000 meters away. 507. So obviously I need to go the opposite way. 501. 400. 507. Now you noticed I was doing the blue circle, just the blue circle. And when I decided, when I noticed it started to increase, instead of decrease the distance, I went with the blue circle with the cross. And the same principle applies. I'm going to keep messing around with that. And uh, once that starts to decrease, it's great. But the thing is, there will always be sometimes a point where it will actually start to increase the distance. It means it means I got to stop using these nodes. That means the blue circle and the blue circle with the cross. I got to try something else, maybe the purple. It means moving the actual orbit down and up. Now, remember, if the actual apoapsis or periapsis, whatever it is you have, vanishes, it means you actually hit the planet. It means you're going in for direct uh, tra trajectory towards the planet. So that's just something to keep in mind. 400. 1.5 million. So we know that's the wrong way, but it means probably the other way should. Yep, the other way we already hit it, you see. So 39. 5,000 meters. That's exactly what we need. Now, uh, because of the speed, we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're now going around 7,828 meters per second in orbit, and uh, when we actually, in relation to Juno, we're probably gonna be around 2,800 meters fast. Now, if we hit Juno at uh, 13 to 15,000 meters at that speed, we will reduce, of course, our speed, but not enough because we're 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 still pretty. Uh, uh, we're still going pretty fast, so we have enough speed to actually drag out of the atmosphere. So uh, to really kill off our delta V or our actual inertia that, or the kinetic energy that we already have stored up, we need to go deeper into the atmosphere. In simple terms, I tested this by messing up a lot. So every time I like obviously enter the, the atmosphere in different altitudes to find out what would be the most optimum altitude to actually eject. You know, so if I if I entered at uh, thirteen thousand, I would actually not break. I would break a bit, but not but not a lot, and I'd still fly out of the actual orbit trajectory. You know, if I used my engines, of course, I I could make the actual orbit. But this time, I'm just trying to make it using pure uh, pure air braking. I want to make an orbit using pure air braking methods. So. How much are we at now? 5,000 meters. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Now, pure air braking methods means without any engines at all for our to burn the fuel so we get closer. Now, unfortunately, we got too damn freaking close. It, it vanished. So I gotta add a maneuver. Hold on. No, we don't need that. That's the problem when you're far away. That's too little. That's too... 7,000, that's... Again, you see, this, the smallest adjustment makes a massive difference. It's, it's really annoying. 10,000 meters, that's too much. I needed 5,000. 6,000, yeah. I'll take 6. If I can get 6, I'll take 6. Okay, hold on now, let's find the damn thing. Uh, 
Let's find the damn thing. There it is. Now the, the nice little trick is if you put time warp it stops moving. And since I don't have SAS, it's brilliant. See, there we go, it locks it. Okay, 17, 16 meters, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. I don't want to mess it up by overshooting with time warp. So, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 2 minutes, 43 seconds away. 30 seconds. 22 seconds. 20, 19, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 4,000, 8,000. I messed it up because I wasn't patient enough. It was one hour away. I didn't know it was the one hour mark. Never mind. Shit happens. Okay, let's get that done. Come on. Now again, you gotta, you gotta, as mentioned before, you gotta have like a sort of, uh, you gotta test this out. You go to the wiki page, you see when the atmosphere starts. For example, Kermel, the actual atmosphere starts at 70,000. But you don't have any resistance at 70,000, so if you if you hit the atmosphere at 65,000, pretty much doesn't break crap. You know, the actual true air braking starts, let's say, around... Uh, the actual true air braking starts around 40,000 meters, so you gotta hit Kerbal at 40,000 meters. It also depends on the size of your ship, because the more, the bigger uh, mass you have, it also affects a different, um, a different way in terms of how much it'll slow down when you hit the actual atmosphere because you have more drag of course you know so the bigger ship you have the better in a way you know everything has its own advantage disadvantage so you gotta you gotta keep all that in mind when you're doing this you know this of course i tested a couple of times so i'm one hour away now so well, let's speed this up a bit now to be sure to actually get the right details you go to the wiki page and then you have the planets that you see above you are gonna click a planet and any planet you click It'll take you to the details page, and once you're on the details page, you're going to scroll down, and on the bottom right, you're going to see uh, a sort of small little box called atmospheric characteristics, and that's what you're actually looking for. Now, of course, uh, this is still in uh, the pre-beta stage, so I'm sure when it comes out, it might be different, it might be the same, so always check the Wikipedia page just to take a look at how the atmospheres are. Now, I have taken the liberty of compiling, uh, you can say, four planets or moons, whatever the hell you'd want to call. So you can take a look at the characteristics. So firstly, Moho, you see that there's no atmosphere at all, so there's no way I can air brake. So pretty much with Moho, I'm going to have to go the old-fashioned way and use a crap load of fuel to get my orbit, and then even more fuel to slow myself down so I can land. Because then i got to kill all the Delta V that I have picked up to get there, or all the actual energy that I picked up to get there. Now, Kerbal, as you see... There is an atmosphere, atmosphere pressure is at 101, which is, I guess, in how dense the actual atmosphere is. Don't take my word for it, I just presume that that's that. And then you have atmosphere height, you see it's at 69,077 meters, the, the atmosphere is still there. Now, with the testing, I noticed if even if you go around 65,000 and stuff, there's really no drag, because still the atmosphere is so thin up there that it's very minimal. The true air in the actual atmosphere is around 40,000 meters, below 40,000 meters, so you'd really have to test it out depending on the size of your ship if you want to enter at 41,000, 39, 38, 37, and also what do you want to do? You want to make an orbit? If you want to make just an orbit and you don't want to land immediately, then you might want to enter a little bit higher because you don't want to kill off all your energy. You just want to use the actual atmosphere to just slow you down and uh, give you an orbit. So you'd probably go around 39,000 meters, you know. If I'm planning in to go for a landing, you know, then I'd just calculate it and I'd go, let's say, for, I don't know, 30,000, 33,000 meters, depending on how much delta V I have and depending on the size of my ship. So that'll pretty much slow me down. Now, if we look at EVE, EVE 
is also has an atmosphere. It's much higher. It's uh, 96,000 meters. I haven't still been there yet, but you see the atmosphere pressure is at 506. So I don't know. You know, I'm just throwing out numbers. Who knows? Maybe the actual true air atmosphere starts at 60,000, but with the pressure substantially higher, five times higher. So you're going to have a hell of a lot more resistance in EVE, which is great if you're coming in with a big ass ship, because pretty much you really don't need to burn so much fuel. You can let the atmosphere break a lot of it for you before you actually start your burns. Now, Juna as you see has atmosphere height of 41,000 meters but after testing it out I do realize that it pretty much doesn't take effect until you go below 15,000 meters so the air is around the 15,000 meter mark for it to actually drastically change or uh, reduce the actual speed you can go obviously at 25 but it's so minimal it really doesn't affect go below 15,000 I usually prefer to pick anywhere between 7,000 meters to 13,000 meters depending on how much delta V you're trying to kill you know so it really depends with 13,000 meters uh, just coming in from interplanetary trajectory you can still actually get out of the orbit it'll shoot you out you'll reduce the actual trajectory by quite a lot but you'll still jump out of the orbit so it really depends on the size of your ship and how you know again there's no real state to tell you exactly how when to enter so always f5 it to save it and try it out and then f9 it to load it you know so f5 save try it out you know try it you know it really depends like for example in this example that you're going to see in this video i did go for around 7,000 meters to go for a very nice smooth landing if i wanted to adjust an actual orbit i'd probably go let's say around 10,000 meters just to reduce it and give me an orbit without burning any fuel so that's it for uh, the quick wiki analysis always check out the wiki for uh, latest information on the actual atmospheres and i hope this helped you out take care now the worst thing is with this is that i overshoot it it's like the fifth or sixth time i'm trying this so hopefully i won't overshoot it this time now i tested it uh, the first time when I recorded this and the other three times I messed it up with overshooting but the first time I messed up because I entered at 13,000 meters and with my Delta V at 2,800 meters per second or my velocity it was a little bit too fast I did break but not but not enough because I was not in the atmosphere enough so this time that's why I'm going deeper in the atmosphere at 8,000 meters and hopefully I'll be able to break more so let's see how that goes Three, two, one. There we go. Oh, please, oh God, tell me it's correct. Okay, I can't seem to get the damn thing. It means we, we did hit the actual atmosphere. But I couldn't be bothered to fix it anymore, so let's just speed it up and see what we have. Now we do have, what is it, a million meters. Well, that's one hell of a screw up. I hate this bug. This damn bug, I can't click it. There we go. Now, again, the further away we are, the easier it is to fix it. So, we're going to fix it from there. We have a, a million, that's the wrong way to go. It's 18 second burn to fix it, which is pretty much cheap as hell. Again, we do want to get it around the 5,000 meter mark and hope to God we don't hit a mountain, because if we do, we're going in ground 2,500. 6,000 meters. I'm satisfied with that. So in an hour and 27 minutes, we are going to do these adjustments. So pretty much the best thing I'll advise, don't make a many, many, many fixes when you're still not in the actual... Uh, gravitational pull by Juna pretty much make an actual adjustment to get to 500,000 meters when you're out still interplanetary once you're in the actual uh, Juna 
pull like this then you make an adjustment to get it down to 6,000 meters and uh, that should do it out because I did try it before and I did mess it up so let's see what our I did also screw up with time warp so dear old god work 10 minutes away 7 ah overshot it by 5 minutes it should be an 18 second burn so keep that in mind we're at 600,000 meters Two hundred thousand meters. I'm gonna go very slow. Thirty thousand meters. Twenty-five, twenty-three, twenty-two. We want it down to eight or seven, preferably. There we go. Six point seven. Great. And that's it. And now we have two thousand seven hundred, two thousand eight hundred meters per second or 2800 of uh, delta v that we got to get rid of now hopefully dear oh god this is gonna work so let me save it in case it fucks up i'll just reduce the actual height there we go auto saved and uh, well, let us hopefully get to the atmosphere now this is actually pretty cool what's going to happen now is you're going to see the actual orbit completely bend and give us an orbit hopefully and if there's no mountains, then we won't smash into a mountain. Now, another thing to do is to make sure that there's no mountain, is check the orbit always, like that. So we see we have no mountain sticking out, so we're fine. There we go, now watch, now watch this bend. And uh, if I'm lucky enough and I got close enough, it should start to bend. And it should make myself an orbit. It should make me an orbit without burning any fuel at all. It should start to move. It is speeding up. You see, I'm still speeding up because I'm not in the atmosphere. Now it's starting to slow down. And it's going to slow down a lot. 3,000 meters per second. Look at the delta V go to crap. Now look at a bend. Look at it bend. 2,400. Look at it. 1,000. 1,600. 1,500. Now, of course, you can help this out by... by accelerating the opposite way, or you can let it go. Now, I do have a lot of speed, so pretty much... If I, let's say, entered instead of at... Uh, 8,000 meters. Hold on, let's go back to our map. Let's put our last six here. Come on. deploy our other six parachutes and we only have 600 meters of Delta V to kill so that's not a lot at all and of course instead of I entered at uh, I entered at what was it 7,000 meters or something if I entered less if I entered let's say actually a little bit more because as you saw there was too much drag if I entered, let's say, at 8,000 or 10,000 meters, I would have had a perfect orbit. I would have had an orbit without the need to actually burn anything at all. Typically, everybody's burning fuel to get an orbit, but as you see, I burnt nothing and I have an orbit. Now, again, remember, I'm still air braking and I'm pretty much doing all this stuff. Now, from my previous experience... shortcut keys which ones I put there it is it's two now this is gonna mess up because uh, these still have actual problems hold on I need to make my panels go to shit never mind at least I saved one I forgot the keys for this actual build but who cares so in uh, 
my previous build I fixed this issue, but these engines are going to break up when I land, but that's fine. Now I am at 70 meters per second, 65, and I sure as hell wasted a hell of a lot less fuel than normally. Now I'm still 2,000 meters, but let's slow down. Now again, don't look at that. Keep an eye on this ball. Remember, you need to get to the cross. You gotta burn here to push the cross towards the correct part. So there we go. We have no SAS, so that is a little bit complicated. But since these engines do have a vortex, so it's fine. So this is pretty much it in terms of uh, this tutorial. It is obviously gonna break a hell of a lot more once we. Uh, deploy these parachutes as well but uh, that's pretty much it so instead of entering let's say at 8,000 what I did now you could have entered at 10,000 and you would have got a perfect orbit without burning any fuel at all you know and uh, if you did what I did just now you'd pretty much break a lot of speed and you'd use a hell of a lot of this fuel just to get into the atmosphere because remember I did kill off I think at least a thousand five hundred of my speed or thousand five hundred of Delta V whatever you'd like to call it in terms of being able to land so that, that's a, that I think is pretty cool. So yeah. Let me just land on Juno. I know this is a long tutorial, but it's it's a pretty cool tutorial. So 9 meters per second. 9.2 now from 600 meters high. Look at the beautiful thing I have. 8.1 meters. I think I could speed it up. Let's try to make a straight landing. Now, of course, the engines are going to rip off, but you know, whatever. Oh no, I actually landed, that's really cool. So there we go, this is how to air break. Now let's go back to the map. If I entered, just to repeat it, at 10,000 I would have probably got a perfect orbit. I entered a little bit too steep, so it obviously closed in. But again, I killed off a lot of Delta V and that saved me a lot of fuel. So what I did just here probably saved me a shitload of fuel. Generally I saved a lot of fuel in terms of coming close. I don't have a massive orbit, so I don't have to reduce that. Well, this is in terms of all different ways of saving fuel. The last, of course, thing I'd like to tell you in terms of saving fuel, the best thing would be... Uh, let's switch off the lights. The best engine in space, of course, in space, and the most efficient fuel engine in space when you're in space, not actually on any planet, if the planet doesn't have an atmosphere or if the moon or asteroid doesn't have an atmosphere, is, of course, the actual nuclear engines. So using that, of course, is, is also fuel efficient. So this is pretty much everything you need to know in terms of fuel efficiency, all these little small little tricks and small little adjustments you make that'll save you a crap load of fuel. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but I did want to get all the information out there and show you all the mess ups that uh, do manage to happen like I did uh, get done. And uh, But still, it actually works out. So that's pretty cool, even though we did rip off one of our solar panels, but that's fine. We do have two more, so more than enough to keep our charge going. Anyways, we do have battery packs, a lot of them as well. So that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, happy gaming, take care, and don't forget to give your video a thumbs up. Oh, this is just to see around that I'm doing it, I'm actually funneling out the fuel to my other two tanks. And uh, this is. I'm going to decouple this. Get rid of the extra weight. Decouple this. Now I'm left with uh, two tanks, which I'm going to actually funnel the fuel to the center tank. My new version of uh, this um, actual system is much better because I have a complete asparagus system, but uh, this is the older version. If you guys are continuing to watch this, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. I also do want to 
see if I have enough force to... Uh, hold on, what is this? Actually, the couple that... I want to see if just the actual uh, nuclear engines will be enough to get me out of here. That'll be something cool to see. So, uh, yeah. I think with these two are done as well. Yep. Decouple. And to decouple. So we got rid of the four, now we just gotta repack our actual I forgot the damn shortcut key. You gotta get close, I think. There we go, repack shoot. We just gotta repack two shoots. jump, repack shoot, there we go, what? He exploded in thin air. Did you guys see that? Never mind. That's pretty funny. <sighs> okay, retract. What happened? Close. Retract panels. So one guy died. Spontaneously combusted into thin air. So I'm actually pretty interested to see what happens. There we go. If we can actually lift off. No, we can't lift off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was pretty cool for as long as it lasted. And I'll see you guys another time. Bye.